Hey, what is up you guys? I'm back with another video and I am finally making my end of the year list video. Yes, this is my top 50 albums of 2017. Now I know I did say in my last video that I wanted to try to get this uploaded before 2018 officially started, but uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, technically while I'm recording this, it's still technically 2017 where I live, but by the time this gets uploaded, it's pretty much going to be 2018, like very early into 2018. So, I mean, at least I'm getting it out now, I guess. I don't know, like, f I don't know, some of it was due to laziness for me not getting this video out, but also for like a week and a half, for like almost two weeks, I was actually pretty damn sick, and I felt like absolute shit. So, of course, I did not feel like making videos at all at that time. And I literally just got over being sick, like, less than a week ago, so, yeah. And I actually was going to plan on trying to record this last night, but I just never did. <laughs> Typical me, huh? <laughs> but no, at least I am getting this out now. So yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, 2017, <clears throat> I thought was a great year for music. Literally for pretty much all types of music. I thought it was yet another great year for music. And yeah, he just had so many good releases this year to where even making this top 50 list was hard. I mean, my top 50 list making that last year was hard enough. <laughs> Excuse me. But honestly, I'd say this year's list was probably even harder to make. So, yeah. But I am pretty happy with my list. I am happy with my list. And also, one thing before I get into the actual list. Keep in mind, guys. This list is just opinion. It's not fact. This is just my personal list. If there's an album on here that you happen to like that isn't on here maybe i just didn't listen to it or maybe i just didn't like it as much as you did so just keep that in mind this is just my personal list and this is my personal opinion so yeah and i do want to quickly get uh my ep of the year out of the way first my ep of the year is a uh, easily fields of isolation by mist of misery mist of misery they're a very very great uh, pretty much like a very, they're like a very atmospheric symphonic black metal band from Mist of Misery. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, from Sweden, sorry guys, sorry. <laughs> from Mist of Misery, from Sweden, sorry, they're from Sweden. And yeah, it's symphonic black metal, but it's also very, very atmospheric. These guys are just riddled with atmosphere. And the other EP they released this year was also great too, but I like this one just a little bit better. And they actually had a, they have a cover of Tortured by Solitude by Cold World on here. And that's literally one of my favorite songs of all time. And Melancholy Squared, the song that album is off of, I absolutely love that album to death. And yeah, I love Tortured by Solitude. It's my favorite song by Cold World. And I thought they did a great job with this cover. I thought they did, they did a great job with it. So yeah, Fields of Isolation by Mist of Misery, my EP of the year. Now on to the actual list. So through most of this list, probably up until I get to about the top 15, top 10, I'm just going to breeze through real quickly because I really don't want this video to be way too long. So yeah, number 50 is 17 by Triple X Temptation. He's a, a pretty new rapper on the scene, and I believe he's only like 18, 19 years old, I think. I think only like 19. Uh, about to turn 20 soon. And yeah, this is his debut album. It's a... Uh, like, with a lot of his music, he's mixed in a lot of stuff, kind of like emo music, I think, hip-hop, of course, uh, even some smidges of metal here and there, like heavy metal, and uh, it's also pretty lo-fi for hip-hop. It's pretty lo-fi for hip-hop, if I do say. So yeah, I thought it was pretty decent. Uh, number 49 is a tie, and I actually do have a few ties on here, just like on my list from last year. Sorry, guys. <laughs> There's just some stuff I couldn't keep off of here, but yeah. Here's the first one. Uh, Walk in Darkness with their new album, In the Shadows of Things. And uh, The Burning by Urn. <clears throat> uh, Walk in Darkness, they're a, pretty much a pretty straightforward gothic metal band with a female lead singer, and it's all clean vocals. So, yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I was just looking at my TV. Anyway, 
so yeah if you like pretty much straightforward gothic metal uh, i'd say check out walk in darkness so yeah pretty decent stuff and uh urn they're like a black and thrash metal band that's very fast very chaotic pretty heavy and i thought this is a pretty decent album as well number 48 another tie betraying the martyrs with their new album the resilient and devil electric with their self-titled album devil electric betraying the martyrs are very like symphonic death core i guess you can say like death core metal core band that uh yeah that also has a lot of clean vocals in their music and uh i think they're pretty a decent band. I thought this was a pretty decent album. I saw them live earlier this year and I met a couple of the members. They were cool guys. Yeah, I don't like this as much as like their last album, but I still think it's pretty decent for what it is. And Devil Electric, they're pretty much a straight up like stoner rock band. I'm still like very new to like kind of stoner rock and like stoner doom and stuff like that and those styles. But yeah, I thought this was also pretty decent stuff. So yeah, I thought it was pretty good. So if you like stoner rock, check this out. Num <clears throat> number 47 is another tie, and I this is the last tie for a long time, I swear, guys. Actually, after this, there's only one more, I think. I think. Uh, is Raven Keeper, with his self-titled debut, Raven Keeper. This is my friend Jamie's uh, Dungeon Synth Project. And it's tied with Trinity by Council of Nine. So yeah, uh, but yeah Raven Keeper. This is my friend Jamie's... Uh, Dungeon Synth Project. I've talked about this, I think, a couple times before on my channel. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's also... And Jamie's also been on, like, some live streams on my channel before, too. He's a really cool guy. Um, and, yeah, this is his Dungeon Synth Project. And I'm an absolute newbie when it comes to Dungeon Synth. I, like, literally know pretty much almost nothing about Dungeon Synth. I just haven't gotten to dive deep into it yet. So I'm just still getting my feet wet in Dungeon Synth. But this is pretty decent stuff. Um... This came out pretty early in the year. The reason why this is this low is just because I didn't listen to it nowhere near as much as I thought I would. And it's not even that long of an album. But uh, but yeah, I still thought it was pretty decent for what it was. So yeah. And Council of Nine is pretty much an, a dark ambient project. So if you like dark ambient, check this out. It's very atmospheric, very uh, dark <laughs> sounding. So yeah, if you like uh, ambient music, basically, check this out. Next is uh, number 46, Tyakra. Hopefully I'm saying that right. With Winter Gedunkin. Probably said that so wrong. Uh, <laughs> this is a, I believe, a one-man black metal project. I forget from where, though. That, uh, yeah, this is a kind of a strange album in some way. Like, the vocals, I'm not too huge on. I think they could be better, but... Uh, I do like the vocals for what they are, but what really drives this album for me is the guitar playing. It's pretty crazy on here. This did come out, I think, pretty late, in, really late in the year, though, so that's why it's this slow, but it's still pretty good for what it is. Number 45, Wish Dude with Dododen Heben Het God 2. It's, uh, I think this is like Danish or something, so correct me if I'm wrong, which I'm pretty sure I am. But these guys are actually from Belgium, but I think this is actually in Danish, from what I heard. Um, this is a pretty much straight-up black metal band that has some nice riffs and everything. And Yeah, so if you want some pretty straightforward black metal that has some pretty nice atmosphere, check this out. This would have been pretty much pr a lot higher up on here if I just gave this out more time, but it's still pretty good. Number 44 is Lonely Star with My Personal Heaven. This is a one-woman atmospheric black metal project yes a one woman project she's from i believe new york and i think her name is alicia if i remember right she also released an ep this year that was also pretty decent and yeah i think she has a pretty bright future she's still pretty new to the whole scene and yeah like i said it's like pretty atmospheric black metal that uh yeah i mean if you're into that kind of stuff um definitely uh check this out so yeah check out lonely star Next is uh, Aya, hopefully I'm saying that right, with Distances. Now, and this is at number 43. This is a post-rock band that has, uh, I think there was both male and, male and female vocals on here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there was. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much pretty good, straightforward post-rock with a lot of great, beautiful, lush atmosphere. 
And uh, yeah, so if you're into that, definitely check out Aya, Ia, however you say their name. Next is Havu Krunu with, again, I'm going to say this really wrong, Kale Sarut Soy. I think that might be in Finnish because I think this band's from Finland, if I remember right. This is pretty much pagan black metal. And that's another style of music I'm a noob to. I literally know no, pretty much nothing about the genre. Um, but yeah, this is like considered, I think, like pagan black metal. And uh, this is pretty damn good stuff. Again, another album that would have been quite, that would have been probably a lot higher if I just gave more listens, which. There's like a lot of releases on this list that if I gave them more time, they would probably have been quite a bit higher or even a lot higher. But what can you do? But yeah, this is still pretty damn good stuff. Um, pretty good solos and riffing and everything. And yeah, I liked it. Number 41, by the way, I keep looking over here because this is where my list is. Oh. Number 41, The Birthday Massacre with Under Your Spell. This is a uh, kind of like a gothic rock, somewhat gothic metal, but pretty much mostly a gothic rock band that uh has been around for quite a while actually and i do like their stuff again another album that if i gave it more listens it would have been a lot higher on this list but i do think it is pretty damn good uh for the amount of time i did give it so yeah if you like gothic rock definitely check this out pretty good shit number 40 iron reagan with crossover ministry these guys are a crossover thrash band that has i know at least one member of like municipal waste i believe I think I know at least Tony. I think that's his name from Nymphs of Voices in this band. Oh, and I know the bassist and lead vocalist of Cannabis Corpse is also in this project. So yeah, that's what I do know. So I think this is kind of like a super group. And these guys are just really fun uh, thrash that uh, I think if you just want to jam out to, so yeah, some to jam out to and just kind of just, I don't know, go crazy to play some Iron Reagan. They're just very, very fun. So yeah. As Iron Reagan. Number 39, Endin with Through the Mirror. This band is from Japan, I believe. And this is kind of like a... This is like very noisy. Like there's a lot of noise in it. And there's also like some grindcore and all that. And it's pretty experimental as well. So it's like grindcore. It's very experimental. It's really noisy. And I thought this was a pretty interesting listen. This is an album that I was pretty late to on listening to, but I still think it's pretty damn good. So check out Endin. Number 38 is Oceana with Revelation. Um, if you pretty much know Deathcore, you know this band. They are a very well-known and very popular Deathcore band that have been around for quite a bit now. And they kind of continue like the whole alien theme vibe that they've done with their last... Uh, material and stuff with this release and it's very riddled with atmosphere very space-like very just very crushing shit my only complaint really and why it's pretty low on here is that it's only about 30 minutes yeah it's only about half an hour long but it still packs a hell of a punch and yeah comes at number 38 <clears throat> number 37 is make them suffer with worlds apart this is a Pretty much a symphonic like deathcore slash metalcore band that uh makes some pretty killer shit um i'm not too familiar with these guys i've known about them for a while just haven't checked them out that much but this is a pretty damn good album and there's even clean female vocals on here which i think really add to uh their symphonic elements really well so yeah check out uh make them suffer with their new album number 36 power trip with nightmare logic this is some very killer, uh, like, kind of crossover thrash, I think, but it's very killer thra like, uh, thrash metal. It's very fast, aggressive. The solos on here are very uh, ripping and shit. They're, they're really gnarly. And, yeah, if you want some fast, aggressive uh, shit, check out Power Trip. Number 35, Vile, uh, Vile Reincarnation by Maggot Colony. This is a brutal death metal band from Taiwan. Yes, they're from Taiwan. They're probably, I'd say for now, the only extreme metal band I know from Taiwan. I think I might know one other one, but I'm not really sure. But this but this band, yeah, they're from Taiwan. And I've said in the past how I'm not all that big on brutal death metal and like slam. But I'm steadily, you know, slowly getting more into those styles. And this band... 
I think does it really well. It's a uh, the riffing on here and the slams are absolutely killer and the vocals I really like. And this might have been another album I'm thinking about, but I think at one point there was clean vocals on here, I think. I might be thinking of another album, but if there was, now that's pretty much almost n I hear almost I never almost hear clean vocals on brutal death metal. At least from the ones I've heard, so I thought that was a nice little touch. So it's Mega Colony. Number 34, Dua Lipa. I mean, why I say it like that? Dua Lipa. <laughs> Dua Lipa with Dua Lipa. Uh, she's pretty much like a, a pop artist. Oh yeah, by the way, guys, I did forget to say there's going to be pretty much all types of music on here. And some of these, some of you might laugh at me for putting on here. I really don't give a shit. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, she's pretty much a pop artist that is actually very popular, which, which is weird though, because... Honestly, until this year, I actually didn't know about her, even though print, even though pr supposedly she's been popular for a really long time. But yeah, this is her debut uh, album. So she's print. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's kind of your typical pop music, but I just like the way she does, and I also like her lyrics and everything. So yeah, check out Dua Lipa. Number thirty-three, Fen with Winter. This is an atmospheric black metal band that also mixes in <clears throat> a lot of post-rock into their music. So, as soon as I heard that, I was immediately interested in this. This came out really early in the year, I think around February or January. And again, another album that would have been a lot higher on this. I guarantee you, probably even top 15, top 10, if I just gave it a lot more listens. But for some weird reason, I just didn't, and I even own it on CD. I think it was actually the first 2017 release I even got on physical copy this year. So I don't know why I didn't listen to it a lot more. But yeah, it's still very good for what it is. Uh, very atmospheric, very, could be pretty uh, fast paced also at times. And when the post rock elements come in with like the clean vocals and shit, it is absolutely great. So check out Fen. Number 32, The Great Old Ones with EOD, A Tale of Dark Legacy. This is a post black metal band. I want to say from france like france or germany i think it's one of those two correct me if i'm wrong on either of them or both but i'm pretty sure it's like france or something either way this is great post black metal and the great old ones they're kind of different from a lot of post black metal as much as i love post black metal a lot of it does kind of blend together like a lot of post black metal yeah it's pretty aggressive but a lot of it's also just very you know beautiful sounding and very pretty and lush the great old ones though for post black metal they're pretty damn dark like they're pretty damn dark and really heavy for post black metal so yeah so yeah if you want post black metal that's actually pretty damn dark and a little more heavier than a lot of other post black metal check out the great old ones number 31 <clears throat> the big moon with love in the fourth dimension this is an all-female indie rock band from i forget where they're from but this is their debut album i think this also came out pretty early in the year too i think excuse me guys sorry i, I literally just ate dinner <laughs> <coughs> but yeah this is their debut album and this is really really good uh indie rock that's uh pretty catchy at times and nice to sing along too and i do like the lyrics and uh yeah and uh, I think these ladies have a bright future ahead of them. So if you want some pretty good indie rock, check out The Big Moon. Number 30. Now this is where one of the albums I'm going to have that some people are probably going to give me shit for. But I don't care. I just have a very diverse music taste, okay? So yeah, I'm getting ready for the shit comments. Number 30. After Laughter by Paramore. Yes, I actually did like the new Paramore album. What I liked about it is it is definitely different from their other stuff. It's This has like a very big like 80s feel, kind of like an 80s new wave pop, like pop rock feel. I think that's what I really liked about it. And yeah, I thought it was a fun little catchy album. So yeah, I, I did like it. I thought it was pretty good, decent. Like fucking crucify me. <laughs> Number 29, Flesh Coffin by Lorna Shore. Wait, yeah. Uh, another album that came out really early in the year that I didn't give as much listens as I should have, but it's still really good. This is pretty much like, 
Honestly, you pretty much you can pretty much consider this blackened deathcore. This is pretty much blackened deathcore. Like Lauren Shore always kind of had a little smidges of of a blackened deathcore feel to them, but with this one, it's a lot more obvious. Like there is a lot of black metal influence on here, and it's still very very heavy and crushing killer deathcore. And I saw them live earlier this year at Summer Slaughter. They were really killer. And yeah, I absolutely do really like this album. And yeah, I thought it was pretty killer. So really interested to see where they go more with this Black and Deathcore uh, style, if they continue to do that. So yeah, number 28, The Acacia Strain with Grave Bloom. Um, the Acacia Strain, really well-known Deathcore band that a lot of people like. And some quite a bit of people are also kind of iffy on them. I happen to like them. I don't like this as much as a Coma Witch. I absolutely love that album. I own both CD and vinyl. Um, but this album is pretty damn good. It, it is a good, nice follow-up to it, uh, to Coma Witch. And yeah, it's pretty much... You know what you're going to get with the Acacia Strain. It's very heavy, crushing, a lot of breakdowns and stuff. And yeah, another good album by the Acacia Strain. Number 27, Slaughter to Prevail with Misery Sermon. This is um, uh, Slaughter to Prevail's debut album. They are a very heavy killer deathcore band from Russia. That, uh, yeah, if you like destructive, chaotic, killer's hell deathcore with some, with some um, uh, gnarly vocals, check out Slaughter to Prevail. I've seen them live twice. I was supposed to see them live for a third time at Summer Slaughter, but they weren't at my, they weren't at uh, my city for some reason. I don't know why. But yeah. They're good live, and also, this is a killer album. I'm glad they finally released their debut after releasing, like, a couple of EPs. Some pretty good EPs, and, yeah, I thought they knocked it out of the park with their debut. So can't wait to see what they're going to do next. Number 26, Alterage with Enhenen? I can't even say it. But, yeah, Alterage. This is a black into death metal band from, I believe, Spain. That's very, very well in the vein of bands like Portal. Like, seriously, basically, if you like Portal, check out Alterage. Like, if you just like very dense, murky, disturbing, black and death metal, check out Alterage. That's pretty much all I can say. And, uh, yeah, it is a little short, so that's kind of why I just barely missed out the top 20 and top 25. But it's still really damn good. Just check out Alterage. Now at the top 25, number 25, Sorrow Plagues with Homecoming. This is a, a, <clears throat> a very atmospheric, kind of shoegazy, post-black metal band. And it's a one-man project. And I think this is his second full-length, third, second. I could be wrong, but I know he has like at least one other full-length. And uh, yeah, I could see why some people might not like this. Um... It is a it is like really polished and also like a little too I guess pretty sounding even for like atmospheric black metal especially when the shoegaze parts come in but I love this album I especially do really like it when the shoegaze parts come in and yeah I thought uh he did a really good job on this and uh yeah and I believe he's from the UK and I think his name is David I think so yeah I thought he did a good job and I think he also just started playing live shows for the first time this year. So, yeah. So that's Sorrow Plagues. Number 24, Kublai Can. Hopefully I'm saying it right. With Nomad. These guys are a hardcore band. Pretty much uh, from, I think, Texas, I want to say. But yeah, this is pretty much like, kind of pretty much like hardcore, hardcore punk. That is very heavy. And I think even really fun to listen to. Especially if you're working out, like, if you want to listen to some really good, like, workout music, whether if you're at the gym or if you're, like, working out at home, listen to Clue by Clan, especially while you're, like, lifting weights or shit. This is really good music to listen to while you're, while you're working out. Um, yeah, it's very heavy, very pummeling, but also, like I said, a pretty fun album, I think, for me. So, yeah, that's Kublai Can. I'm probably saying it really wrong, but yeah. Number 23, Rope Sect by Persona Ingrata. This is an album that really came out of nowhere for me. And when I first saw the album cover, I thought this was... Don't ask me why. I thought for some reason this was kind of going to be like... Like sludge metal or maybe grindcore. Maybe both. <laughs> but when I first played it, it really caught me off guard. 
it's like really gothic and has like a depressing sort of atmosphere and it's also kind of like post-punk and that's a once again another genre i'm pretty much just getting my feet wet into is post-punk i know a little bit of it like bands like wire and beast milk and joy division bands like that but yeah i think it's considered like post-punk oh and also the cure i love the cure i know they've been considered post-punk and i think it's really good i would have it would, this this would easily be my top 20 if I gave this a little bit more listens, but yeah, definitely uh, check out Rope Sect with uh, Persona and Tegrata. Probably saying it in Grate. I'm probably saying it wrong. So yeah, check out Rope Sect. It's very uh, gothic and depressing. <laughs> Number 22. Again, just remember, guys, my personal opinion. And uh, just for the record, pretty much there was no other albums I liked by this band until their new album. Pretty much everything else by this band, I think, is hot fucking garbage. But this album, I actually thought was pretty damn decent. A Mirror with a Look at Yourself. Yes, for the literally the first time ever, I actually liked an Amir album, for the most part, all the way through. Like I said, pretty much Every everything else by this band before this album, I think for the most part, is absolute fucking trash. Especially their last album. Uh, I think it was called Eternal Enemies, and the album before that, I think it was Slave to the Game. <clears throat> yeah, just no, 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 no. But they're pretty much an entire new band now. Outside of Frankie Palomari, he's the only guy. He's the only guy in the band that hasn't left. And honestly, I think that's just what this band needed, was a completely new lineup, outside of obviously Frankie. And I know Josh from, I think, Glass Cloud, he's in this band, I know that. They were one of the first ever uh, metal bands I saw live, Glass Cloud. I really need to check them out, I haven't listened to them in forever. But yeah, um, definitely, uh, I mean, it does have a lot of your typical Amir stuff in there. But I'd say it's a little bit less in there. Like, I'd say all the stuff that made Amir really annoying and their other albums, I'd say it's not as present in this album. And they actually try a little bit of new stuff. And there's also a little bit less rapping in here. And, yeah, I honestly thought this was a pretty fun, pretty good album. So, yeah, literally for the first time ever, I actually liked an Amir album. So, yeah. Number 21, Tetragrammicide with Primal Incinerators of Moral Matrix. This is their debut album, and finally they've released a debut. And, um, yeah, if you want something that's just absolutely abrasive, like really hard to listen to, something that's just chaotic, destructive, abrasive, disturbing, and you really want to test yourself, check out Tetragrammicide, especially their older stuff. Like, this album, it's still, like, it's still got the very abrasive, noisy, black and death metal feel. But I'd say, compared to, like, their EP and, like, the demo, especially the EP they released a couple years ago, this is a lot, not a lot, but this is, like, a little, just a little bit more of a cleaner production. It's, this is not, like, polished by any means. Like, this is not, like, really clean by any means. This is still very harsh and aggressive and, and abrasive. But it's just like a little bit more clean, I'd say. Just a little bit more, but it's still very good. So check out, yeah, check out Tetragrammicide. By a lot of the song titles on this album are, <laughs> wow. Now the top 20. Number 20, Full of Hell with Trumpeting Ecstasy. I listened to this pretty late in the year, but holy shit. A lot of people have been raving about this album, and I can see why. Again, I did listen to this album pretty late in the year, so that's so that's why it's only at number 20. Even though it only is a 23-minute album, that's also maybe kind of why. But goddamn, I know this album's really short, so it's probably why, but this album just fucking flies through. Like, even if it was, like, probably 50 minutes, I think it would feel like it flies through. This is very great, like... I know, like, Full of Hell are considered, like, very sludgy, I think. And power violence or whatever but also pretty damn noisy i'm not gonna lie i haven't listened to barely anything else from them but i do like this album and i do need to check out more of them so that's full of hell with trumpeting ecstasy number 19 lord with melodrama uh yeah uh lord she released a new album for the first time in like four years and i thought it was pretty damn good i don't 
like it quite as much, at least right now, as her debut Pure Heroin. But I still think this is a pretty damn good album and a pretty damn good follow-up. You know, it's pretty good uh, pop music that I think is, once again, very catchy. And just uh, very good. And I do like the lyrics and, like, the beats and everything. And I do like her voice. I've always liked her voice. So, yeah, pretty damn good album by Lord. Number 18, Exhumed with Death Revenge. Uh, very uh, popular, well-known death metal band. A very well-respected death metal band that's been around for a long time. That, uh, they came back with a great fucking album. Their first album in four years since 2013, I believe. Yeah, I thought this was a really good album, really good follow-up. And I really like the concept behind this album. I'm not going to get into it right now because this video is already pretty long. I'm kind of running low on space on my phone. But I really like the concept on this album. I recently got this album on vinyl. Spoiler alert for my next collection update. So I will go into more about the concept and the story about this album and that. But yeah, really, really good death metal. Check them out if you haven't already for some reason. Number 17, Analepsy with Atrocities from Beyond. This is a brutal death metal band from Portugal that's also, you know, like pretty slammy. And I think this is brutal death metal done to almost near perfection. Again, as even for someone who's not all into brutal death metal right now and slam, I actually love this album. The slams on here and along with the wrists are actually really catchy. And also the wrists just feel very beefy. Very, very beefy and hard hitting. And I do like the vocals. And yeah, so that's Analepsy. Number 16, Veldez with The Bitterness Prophecy. This is a atmospheric black metal project. A one-man atmospheric black metal project from, I believe, Slovenia. And... Yeah, very, very beautiful, gorgeous, atmospheric black metal with some amazing guitar riffs. The riffs on here, I think, what really drives it home for me, uh, other than the atmosphere. And I do like the vocals as well. So if you want some great atmospheric black metal with some great riffs, check out Veldez. Number 15, uh, Persephone. I think that's how you say their name with Athma. Hopefully I'm saying that right. This is a uh, progressive metal band from... I think it's Angola, something like that. I do know the country they're from begins with an A, but I think it's Angola. And yeah, very, very good progressive metal. Uh, with, you can even say kind of like progressive death metal. They've even had some elements of mellow death in their older stuff, but yeah, this is pretty much like mostly progressive death metal, I guess. Um, very, very good. And there's some clean vocals on here too. And there's actually a guest appearance uh, from Paul, the lead singer of uh, Cynic. And I thought... That was an amazing track. My favorite song on the album and one of my favorite songs of the year. And his vocals sound like really robotic on that song, but they work so well, I think, with this style. So very, very good progressive metal. Check out Persephone. Number 14 is the last tie on here. Shadow of Intent with Reclaimer and Creeper with Eternity in Your Arms. Shadow of Intent, they're a very, very good deathcore band from... Um, I forget where they're from, but they're a very, very great deathcore band. And this is their second album. And I liked their album last year, too. Uh, their debut from last year, Primordial, I think it was called. And this is another great album by them. It's very melodic, pretty technical at times, and it's also very heavy. So check out Shot of Intent. And Creeper, this is their debut album. They're pretty much considered like a punk rock, horror punk band. Yeah, like even horror punk. Um... That also has some keyboards and some female clean singing in there too. Well, I mean, it's all clean vocals, but you know what I mean. And yeah, I thought this is uh, this was very good. These, these guys have been getting a lot of praise this year, and for very good reason. This is a very, very good album. So check out Creeper. Um, number 13, Violet Cold with Anime. Anime? For a long time, this was in my top 5, top 10 albums of the year. Until later in the year when I heard some albums I liked a little bit more. And also, it's actually been quite a bit since I've listened to this album. But it's still very, very good. And this is a one-man project from Azerbaijan. Yeah, from Azerbaijan. And he mixes in, especially on this album, like, shoegaze, atmospheric black metal, post-black metal. A lot of ambience. Maybe, I don't know if I'd say post-rock, but... There's just a lot of styles on here. I can't even name all of them. And it's very, very good stuff. Check it out. Number 12, Paris with All We Know of Heaven, All We Need of Hell. Yep, I've said many times how much I love Paris and that their debut album, White Noise, is one of my favorite albums of all time. Not just one of my favorite non-metal albums, but one of my favorite albums of all time. I've loved that album for over a year now. 
and I really, really do like their new album. Obviously, I, for at least right now, don't like this as much as White Noise, but I still think this is a great album. I really, really do like it. Paris pretty much continuing their style. It's just they did change up a little bit here, but yeah, I absolutely love it. Let's check out Paris. At number 11, Neobla Viscaris with Urn. Now, I know over the last couple of years, these guys have gotten some shit because of the the whole, like, I think it was, like, sexual assault allegations with their now former bassist. I think his name was Brad from, like, earlier this year. And also uh, the whole crowdfunding campaign, which I thought was stupid, even though I do love these guys. And, yeah, these guys, for a while, there were one of my favorite bands, and I still love these guys, just not quite as much as I do as it did before but they still have one of my favorite albums of all time and said it all so yeah, i don't care about the stuff that's gone on in their personal lives i still love their music and i do really like their music i loved this album so yeah number 10 the top 10 code orange with forever um yeah check out code orange if you want some crazy heavy shit this is like hardcore kind of pretty much so check it out if you want some crazy heavy shit by the way, guys, I am going to have to rush through the top 10 because I'm about to run out of space. My phone is about to die. <laughs> or, sorry. No. Number 9, Dying Fetus with Ron One to Fuck With. So literally, outside of the really cringy album title, this is an amazing death metal album. Dying Fetus pretty much continuing what they have done before. Very great technical, brutal death metal that, uh, yeah, is also very groovy at times. So, yeah, this is Dying Fetus being Dying Fetus. Check out, check it out if you check it out if you haven't yet for some reason. Number eight, Bell Witch with Mirror Reaper. This is absolutely amazing funeral doom metal. That is just very, very oh, it's so atmospheric, especially with the clean vocals and the harsh vocals. And it's pretty much all one song, and the whole album's like 83 minutes long, and it's one song. But I don't think it gets boring at all. There's not a dull moment here, and this is an absolutely great album and a great song. <laughs> So check out Bell Witch. Great Funeral Doom. Number seven, August Burns Red with Phantom Anthem. Yep, I, I've loved August Burns Red for a while. They're a very great, like, melodic metalcore band from, I think, Pennsylvania. And I think with this album, they've stepped it up even more. They're, like, I think this album, they're a little bit more melodic. And uh, they've tried, and they're doing some different things on here. And even they're kind of gotten, I'm not joking, a little technical on here. So yeah, very good album by August Burns Red. Number six, another album that came out of nowhere for me, Vulture with the Guillotine. This is a great, great thrash speed metal album that, uh, yeah, if you like thrash and especially speed metal, but especially thrash, you need to check this out. This is a fucking hidden gem for thrash metal. This band has a very, very bright future. This is just their debut album. Their debut. Yeah. And this album's amazing. So check out Vulture. Now the top five, and this is the one I'm probably gonna get the most shit for. And you're just, and you, and I can already hear the comments. Oh, you're doing it just because the lead singer died, and because you've been a giant fanboy of this band for years. No, I did legitimately like this album, and I actually did listen to it a lot this year, and I legitimately really liked it. Lincoln Park with One More Light. I can already hear the shit comments coming in. I really don't care. I love this album. Yes, it's tragic what happened to Chester. And this album, pretty much a lot of the lyrics were like a cry out for help. And I do think it is a pretty nice, pretty nice album. I do think it was really good. So yeah, give me all the shit you want. Number four, One OK Rock with Ambitions. I've loved One OK Rock for many, many months now. They're one of my new obsessions. They like mixing hard rock, pop punk, rock. And they once in a while have some screaming here and there. And they also do some acoustic type stuff too. And yeah, I absolutely love this album, and I think it's great. Number three is Kawan, hope I'm saying it right, with Kaiho. Amazing, amazing, beautiful post-rock that will just send you to, like, another world. If you, like, especially just close your eyes and just listen to music, it will send you to, like, another world. So great, amazing, beautiful post-rock by Kawan. Number two, Band Made with Just Bring It. Yep, a all-female heavy metal hard rock band from Japan that I've absolutely loved for over a year now. They're one of my favorite bands. I think their music is very catchy. I love the voices from pretty much just about all the girls. Their guitar solos are sick. Their riffs are sick. 
And also, their music is so much fucking fun. It's so much fun. So check out Bandmade. And number one, Pure Wrath with Ascetic Even Tide. This is an atmospheric one man atmospheric black metal project, a one-man project from India. And this is his debut album. His debut album. And it's this amazing. I cannot wait to see what this guy is gonna do in the future. But it's very atmospheric. The riffs on here are absolutely amazing. The vocals are great. All the atmospheric parts and the parts with all the keyboards are also amazing. And even the parts where it's just keyboards playing is great as well. So check out Pure Wrath with Aesthetic Even Tide, my album of the year. So yeah, guys, my phone is about to run out of space. So yeah, hope you guys like this video. This is my final video of 2017. So I'll see you guys in 2018. Happy New Year to you guys. And yeah, I'll see you guys in 2018. You guys stay fucking awesome. And uh, yeah, hope you guys have a great week and a happy new year. Say so happy new year to you guys. And I'll see you guys next time in my next video. Once again, I'll see you guys in 2018. See you guys later and peace out and happy new year. See you guys later. Bye.